Chatimatovah, we're back with you after our Rosh Hashanah video that we put out right before Rosh Hashanah. And uh, we got a lot of interest in, in what our words and, and what we said, and so we're back with you. We decided we'd try it again. We don't really have a plan as to how we're going to do it. We just decided to turn on the camera and talk. Um, we do know that we wanted to touch base on Rosh Hashanah and also on Yom Kippur, which is coming up in a few days. So the first thing that I was thinking to ask you was a question that I get every year about you, about Avi. Um, <laughs> and I've been getting this question about you during the holidays or right after the holidays for the last 20 years. People will inevitably, somebody will always ask me how on earth Avi is able to daven all day <laughs> while fasting, completely fasting, and then still have the stamina and not just the stamina, but the koach to actually finish out the, the, the holiday with such covenant and strength and then blow the shofar. Well, I gotta <laughs> tell you, there's a secret. It's counterintuitive, but the easiest thing to do on Yom Kippur is to be the person who's the shliach sibor, the person who's leading the davening. Really? Because you're so busy hmm. and you're so tied up in what's going on, you don't have time to think about um, eating or think about some of the other things that everybody's just sitting there, okay, let's get on with this. But when you're, oh. they got a lot of pressure and you're, you have to execute the various parts, you know, and we're going to get through this next thing and we're going to get through the next thing. And also the, um, and it's a rush because what we're doing is so spiritual and so intense. And um, so it really builds uh, each, each time, um, each moment just builds on the next. And so I actually get stronger and stronger. My voice gets stronger. Yeah. I could sing and sing and sing. And as long as you don't sing incorrectly while you're doing it, your voice gets stronger, you're, you get a rush, um, adrenaline rush from everything going on. And then when it comes at the very end to blowing the shofar, there's so much anticipation and it's just boom, okay, let's do this. And then uh, like everybody feels that at the end. So I, I think it's a culmination of all of that that just gets, gets me through. And I think the hardest thing is to be in the kihila and to not be leading. Mm. That's the hard part. Mm. So you're busy. We're not busy, so we're having a harder time than you are. You might be busy, too, with different things, mm -hmm. different challenges. That's true. I'm glad I asked. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just refer people to this video in the future now. So let, ask let me ask you a question. Uh -oh. um, I, I'm curious because I was wrapped up in uh, orchestrating things and, and leading, uh, being a shaliach. What was your virtual Rosh Hashanah experience like for you this year, Cam? That's a good question. <laughs> um, it was actually really good for me. Um, I found it very relaxing and um, easy in a sense because I was able to turn the service on and I chose not to have my camera on just because I was home with my kids and um, you know I didn't dress up and sit in a spot where I was like simulating being in services. Um, I was just here in my home. Um, you know, at some points I was making lunch for my kids or um, sitting down to eat lunch with my kids and we had the service still going. It was really nice and relaxed, I guess I would say, and it worked really well for us. Is it true that on second day you were in the service almost the entire time? Yes, I was actually, and the kids um, were in for most of it as well, in and out. They didn't have any uh, rules for them to stay in at one space or anything, of course, in the house, but... Uh, they, they, as well as myself, we probably were in more of the service ever this year than we ever have been. Did you all hear that? <laughs> Since I had children. That's crazy. Well, let's talk, let's get into the heart of things because this is a very um, emotional Yom Tov coming up and, mm -hmm. and very heavy, very heavy and centered around forgiveness. So why do you think it is that forgiveness that it's, it's difficult for some people to forgive, and for others it's, it's not as difficult. I think you'll be better at answering this question, but um, I guess my first reaction, my first impulse is to say that, you know, everybody's life experiences are different, and our, the baggage that we all bring to whatever decisions we make um, 
you know, baggage, good or bad, whatever, just, you know, life experience affects the way we approach things, the way we view things, the way we, you know, um, forgive or, not, or don't forgive, seek forgiveness or don't seek forgiveness. That's true. It's a very organic uh, situation. It's not a carbon copy. Everyone's different. You know, we've been um, saying slichot in the morning. We've been really adding to our prayers a lot with all this virtual stuff. And we're saying longer slichot than we've said at Beit Shalom. And um, one of the motifs that we say over and over again uh, is a very famous phrase, Vayomer Adonai Salachti Kidvarecha. Um, God says that I, I will forgive. I have forgiven. I have forgiven just as you requested, basically, just as you said. And that comes after I looked at, I, I wanted to look in, into the scriptures and see what the source of that was. And it's in the Midbar. And it comes off a very difficult situation for our people. It comes on the heels of the spies going into the land. We know about that. Our dog knows about it. And um, it actually reminds me of our Ufruf because we were married on that partial when the, the spies went into the land to scout out. And ten of the spies came back, as we all know, with a very uh, difficult report, discouraging, that um, made... Um, it, as if we could talk about God, it seemed to make God very upset and God, um, so we're all familiar with that, but I think Hashem wanted to wipe out Am Yisrael at that point because it's such a frustrating thing. And it's like how we feel towards each other, towards people who anger us and disappoint us. We just want to get them out of our lives sometimes. And we want to say, we're not gonna, we can't forgive, this is unforgivable. Moses comes in and intervenes and he basically has a tremendous amount of chutzpah and he says, He says, get a lot of Hashem, please strengthen yourself uh, like you said you would do because what do we want the Egyptians to say that you took us out of Egypt just so that you could destroy us in the desert? And that's when Hashem says, I will forgive you, just like you said, just like you said. So it takes some coaxing, but also just because Hashem forgave us doesn't mean that he forgot. And he says, I forgive you. I'm not going to kill you all, but you're all going to die naturally in the desert. So we're just going to wait for you, for this to resolve itself. I'm not going to trust you, you know, because how often do people do things to us and... Uh, we're not going to trust them again. And if we forgive them, it doesn't mean we're going to trust them to be in that same situation. You don't forget necessarily. You don't. So I think that if we're asked to forgive, it doesn't mean that we have to forget and that it's going to be a good outcome either. It doesn't mean that it's going to be the outcome that we, you know, some fairy tale kind of outcome. Mm. It can still be dramatic and difficult and and we can still have to have a lot of patience just like we had in the wilderness and so i think um you know, i see um between the two of us we have different styles in terms of forgiveness you want to share about uh no <laughs> no i'll share okay but you can share first <laughs> well i try to i try to forgive people i really do and that's kind of what what i spend a lot of energy doing and i notice that you don't always agree with me on that right so, um, you're much more forgiving than i am naturally so what does that mean you're a better person no <laughs> not at all yeah but uh i just have a harder time forgiving i have a harder time forgetting and a harder time forgiving I think you're really good at um, explaining things and situations for yourself that makes that make more situations acceptable. What is that? What do you mean by that? Like I ha I think that you have a more compassionate way of looking at situations and people and their actions, and um, you're able to accept behaviors more easily than I am. Does that make sense? Yeah, based on based on the context or whatever. Right, and I think that you're able to almost justify things in a different way. Like you make sense of things that I just can't make sense of or I judge more harshly. So it just shows that we all, like you said in the beginning, we've got different 
parameters, different uh, sensibilities, I guess. And so we have to work on what we're doing in different ways. I think probably for me, sometimes I need to be a little slower to for, or forgive in a different way. Like maybe to make sure that if I forgive, like we need to forgive, it's a mitzvah to forgive each other, but to make sure that I don't become vulnerable because I've mm -hmm. forgiven. I think you're very good at not being, not making yourself vulnerable, staying mm -hmm. safe, protecting yourself. That's true. So That's true. But I love you and I ask you for forgiveness for any wrongdoing I have done against you in the past year, which I know there are things, and I hope that you will forgive me. I do, and the reason why I can forgive you is because we've dealt with all of our stuff as it comes, because that's really the name of the game, not to wait until Yom that's Kippur. That's true, that's true. But we, we have to deal with things as they come, and we forgive people all year round. This is just a reminder, and I do hope that you uh, will forgive me, because I constantly make the same mistakes over and over again. Yeah, but your mistakes are very small. <laughs> That's good. I'm annoyances. glad that you're here to witness that and we have that on recording. <laughs> so <laughs> we want to say to all of you, Gemar Chati may you have a good, good finish to your seal in the metaphoric book of life. Mm -hmm. And we're really looking forward to Sukkot. That's what we're looking forward to. And we're also looking forward to one, one day soon, hopefully being able to be three-dimensional with you. So in the meantime... Go ahead and add your comments and questions to this video. And if you, whatever questions you have, we'll try to uh, answer them and address them in the next one. Chatima Tovah.